Brother Mark um, decided uh, he brought in the uh, order of worship uh, early in the week and I got looking at it and I thought that's great that we did Psalms 100 and I just started chewing on it more and more so if you have your Bibles turn to Psalms 100 and we're going to look at Psalms 100 today. Funny uh, thing, how many of y'all when you were in elementary school, some of you, how many of your teachers taught you Psalm 100? How many of you actually memorized Psalms 100? Amen. First grade? Amen. Before I could read, I knew Psalms 100. Isn't that amazing? That how God, uh, and, and I think that we sometimes take for granted the heritage and the blessings that we have from the Lord. And uh, last week, um, we uh, took a picture of all of y'all, see how many of y'all were coming tonight. But uh, I tell you what, uh, there's a wonderful side effect of that. I could uh, pull that picture up, and I could look over you, and I could pray for y'all. And uh, when I was a real kid, we're talking about first grade or something like that, how many of you remember the show that was on TV where the little woman had a, a mirror and she could look through and she could see all of y'all that were out there. So all of you that are online, I looked through my mirror last week and I saw you and I prayed for you and you raised your hand and you were going to come tonight to the Civic Center, so you make sure that you come. But I just wanted to pause and just uh, take some time to just thank the Lord for all that he's done for us. Is that fair? So I know we've read it together, but let's do it again. Stand with us in honor of reading God's Word, Psalm 100. By the way, just know that this was the, a reflective psalm that was sung entering the temple. And everyone that would come together would, would do it together. It would be a crescendo of praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord. when they Not just when they brought the Ark of the Covenant in, but every time they came in. Not just when Jesus on Palm Sunday entered the temple, but most wonderfully then. How significant then for those that would give thanks unto the Lord. But it is also something that they would sing every time that the gathering of people would come on Sabbath day to enter into the temple. But any day. So you may just be coming with 10, 15, 20 other people, and you may be entering into the temple. You would just immediately begin singing this song. Have you ever been around where someone would sing it and someone else would just join in, and the next thing you know, there's a whole group. I did that one time going down the beach. We were singing a, a, a two friends of ours and me, and we were just singing a song that we had always sang, and the next thing you know, there was a whole group gathered, and we were all singing praise unto the Lord. This should be something that should be overflowing in our hearts, even when you come to church on Sundays, just a normal day like today. You should have this kind of a, a rejoicing in your heart. Let's hear what God's Word has to say. When I memorized this, it said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But we'll talk about that in just a moment. New King James says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. We are so very grateful and thankful for every gift that is bestowed to us that we know has to come through your sovereign loving, guiding, precious hand. Father, look at us today. Take a picture of us. We are always in your remembrance. We are always in your thoughts. We are always covered by your love. 
Search our hearts and know us and receive our gift of thanksgiving today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. It is one of the Psalms that actually has the superscript to it that was written down. So this is just as much a part of the scripture as the words of the verses when it says it is a psalm or a song of thanksgiving. I like the fact that this is uh, something that they knew and that they would always be thinking of having a song on their heart giving thanks. Yes, it was in my quiet time. I, I sat right there where Rick was here in the sanctuary and having my quiet time this week, and I was just thinking about the song, Give Thanks Unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Give thanks unto the Lord. Give thanks. And I'm grateful that Mark shared that. I'm grateful that you amen and echoed all the things that you're grateful for. The Lord in heaven, who is high and lifted up and who is on his rightful place on the throne, he has no rival whatsoever. There is none that can be seen like him. His glory surpasses anything of any imagination of anyone. And and there he is, high and lifted up, deserving of our praise and our glory, and from our hearts, our thanks. So here he says, the psalmist begins by, by saying that in his life, there's just a, a, a symbol crash, a crescendo that announces his praise. When it's a group of people it could even be seen as what this word would say, a noise, a, a distinguishable noise. Something has happened. You know what I'm talking about? When something happens and there's a stir there, you immediately know by that noise something. And you know the tenor of it, whether it's good or whether it's bad. You know it by hearing it. But in the Christian life, we should have a noise about us. There should be something that just, just shouts forth the glory of the Lord. When I was a child, we were not as refined as we are now. And when we would come to church, sometimes somebody would just have a, a whole cup full that just would overflow and splash on people around us. Now, I never really was thrilled with the one that got happy at the same time every week. I mean, it was 11.22, so it was time to shout. That I, I never got the joy or the blessing out of that. I'm not sure that God did either. But you know, sometimes, sometimes it just comes forth. When I was a kid, people would say amen in church. Amen. I got one. Sometimes they would say, that's right. Sometimes they'd say, glory. Sometimes it would just uh, come off as a whisper. Sometimes it would come off as a scream. But really, that wasn't prompted. That wasn't something that, well, I, that was a good point. The preacher finally made a good point. We should give him a good amen. Well, I can't even get one then. <laughs> it was just something that happened like electricity coming together, and the Holy Spirit within you would come out and say, that's right, it is true, amen. It just would flow. It should be something that happens to us, not just in this room. But what it would be like if two people were in, in Walmart having a conversation, just meeting and catching up, and not just talking about everything that happened in the week, but started talking about the Lord and how good it was. There was a, a video that came out, and, and there was a market. You probably saw it, but there was a, uh, they had a piano, one of those electric pianos over there, and somebody just went up and started playing it. And the next thing you know, five or ten people around. And the next thing you know, there's about 40 or 50 people singing to at the loudest of their voice right there in the middle of Walmart, singing praise unto the Lord. Amen? Just the goosebumps rising. 
And I love it because there wasn't anything that the store manager at Walmart could do to stop that. Amen? There wasn't anything that any unbeliever could do to stop it except listen to it. And there's something about when God's people bring praise. That's special and it's real and it's alive. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. He is not simply just saying us, but he's saying everyone should, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Paul, in Ephesians 5, said we're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in the next verse, he said we were to be joyful. And the next verse, he said we were to be thankful. And the next verse, he said we should come submissive, and yielding to the Word of God. He also, in the book of Colossians, in chapter 3, said we're to be filled with the Word of God. And the next verse, verse 17, he said you should come joyful because of that. In the next verse, verse 18, he said you should come thankful for the next for that. And in the next verses that follow, he said you should come submissive or yielding to the will of God in your life. I wonder if they got that from this. Because the very first thing that he says is become with, with joy in your life and be submissive. Serve the Lord, but not out of drudgery. One of the greatest gifts that parents can give their kids is to speak of the Lord wonderfully in front of them, joyfully in front of them. And with a smile on their face, say, it's, 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 we have the opportunity to come to church. It should never be said, well, it's Sunday, we have to go to church. It should never be thought in any Christian's life, well, I, I, I got to go, I gotta, I've got to part today, I've got to do, I'd rather sleep. It should be the joy of every Christian's life. It would be the great gift of our children, to our children, if they could see a life of parents and leaders and friends and family that came celebrating, serving the Lord. Anything that you did, everything that you did for the glory of God, with from a heart just grateful, glad, happy, gloriously thankful. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord knows. Come into his presence with a combustion of song. Sometimes we hum. Sometimes the hum will become mumbling, mumbling of, uh, of song. Sometimes you'll, have y'all ever seen that person driving down the road and they're over there and they got their hands on the steering wheel and their mouth's just doing this, just singing unto the Lord or singing unto something. I don't know what they're singing unto. It just comes from them. Listen, heaven is a byproduct of being a Christian. That just means we get to be with him in his presence forevermore. But I've got his presence living in with my heart today. And if you only have worship when you come to this place, you're missing out. And if you only sing unto the Lord when Mark's up here playing the keyboard, you're missing out. We should always have the crescendo of love and of praise in our life, singing unto the Lord. I wonder what it would be like if we... From God's perspective, if he's there on his throne looking down over us, watching over us, providing for us, his sovereign hand is there. But from our love, we just can't help but sing forth his praise. Know that the Lord, he is God. The word know there means to experientially know. It's one thing to be told that God is good. It's another thing to know he is good personally. If we had testimony time and if we got real, we could all go around and say, I know God is good. I know that he is alive and well because we could give a testimony to it. 
It is he who has made us, not we ourselves. Literally here, it means it is he who made us. Come on now. And we are his. We belong. That means because I belong, I belong to him. I serve him. But listen, also it means because he made me and because I belong, all that he has is mine. I am his. And he will provide. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. We just every day get the privilege of getting up and walking and following him. Yielding to the will of God. Verse 4 says, enter into his, cor- into his gates with thanksgiving. We had kind of a spontaneous moment of praise this morning. As they would be entering into the temple, could you just imagine somebody saying, God is so good! And they started saying all the things that they were grateful and thankful for. I'm grateful for life. Where would I be if God didn't love me enough to give me life? I didn't ask for this, but I was born with an eternal soul. And I have life. And I have joy because of that life. I have choices that I get to make. I'm grateful for my family. Aren't you grateful for your family? Bradley said he was. Thankful for uh, that you belong together. That you get that choice of being together. I'm grateful for my parents who gave me that Christian example. The most consistent Christian I've ever known in my life was my father. My mother was just so submissive to the will of the Lord. Carried her little New Testament that I keep beside my bed in my my night table. The little New Testament that she carried and she would thumb through. I'm grateful for for the heritage that my family gave me. I'm grateful that God gave me the spouse that I have. The wife that for some reason loves me and chooses to be with me. I don't know why. But you know, I'm We've been married all these years. I'm 59 years old, and I want to tell you that the love I have for my wife could not be greater than it is today. And my children will be together today, my granddaughter. But, you know, we've been doing a study on Wednesday nights about prayer. We found out, and we're, I, I'm really blessed by this, that our prayers don't end. They continue. They, they continue constantly and 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 when we pray a prayer of blessing it goes from one generation to the next generation to the next generation brother jim i'm grateful i didn't even realize but now i'm grateful that my prayers are going to my great grandchildren that i do not know do not have yet and my great great and my great 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 and my great 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 it all sounds great to me and i'm love i'm I'm amazed that God is going to be able to do that. I'm very grateful for life. I'm grateful for my family. <clears throat> I'm grateful for friends. I'm grateful for old friends. Aren't y'all? One thing social media has done is it's helped me keep up with some old friends. I'm grateful for new friends. I, I'm grateful for um, friends that know everything about me and still like me. I'm grateful for my two o'clock friends. Y'all know what that is, don't you? A two o'clock friend is somebody that you can call at two o'clock in the morning, and they're going to be there for you. No questions asked. Aren't you? Aren't we grateful? By the way, that list may be smaller, but sometimes I think it's smaller because we never expand it to be bigger. There probably are more people who would be there. I'm grateful for all the support. Where would we be if it were not for our friends? I'm grateful for church. I'm grateful that when I was a kid, they taught me the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. 
I'm thankful that there was a group of men who poured into my life who were my RA leaders. As a royal ambassador, I will do my best to become a well-informed, responsible follower of Christ. I will have a Christ-like concern for all people. I will learn how the message of Christ is carried around the world, and I will keep myself clean and healthy in mind and body. They didn't have any clue, but it stuck. I'm grateful for Barbara Welch, who taught me in Sunday school. I'm grateful for a church that when my dad left and went to another church, he allowed me to stay there. And that church poured into me. And they let me teach Sunday school. And I had youth. Mark, when I was 18, I was leader of a youth, and we had about 50 kids in our youth group. I'm grateful for that opportunity. I'm grateful that they made me Sunday school director. I served about on everything that you could think of in that church. I actually even served on a pool committee, pulpit committee for that church. I don't know why, but they somehow they saw some mustard seed in me, and for some reason they so chose to pour into me, and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for church. I'm grateful for all the people that make up church. I'm grateful for all the churches that I've been in in the past, but I'm grateful for the church that I serve in today. See, I believe it's not that you follow me. I, I think that uh, though I, I like the term lead pastor because I think that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to lead. But in, in, our, on, in our world that today, we lead side by side. You don't follow behind me. You don't go ahead of me. We walk side by side. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. I'm grateful for church. I'm grateful for everything that church stands for. I'm grateful for our country. We got problems, but I think we're far and above anything else in all the world. I think we take our freedoms that we have for granted. We don't need to. We may lose some of them, and we may never appreciate the freedoms that we have now until we lose them, but I'm very grateful. I'm grateful for the military that stands behind us. I'm grateful for the police. I'm grateful for the health care workers. I'm grateful for the health care that we have. I'm grateful for the hospitals and the doctors and the nurses. And I'm grateful for the EMTs and the fire people and all the first responders. I'm grateful for that huge army that is there that makes up America. I'm grateful for the local governments. And I'm grateful, grateful for those people that serve in those positions that, that most of the time are unnoticed. They're kind of like an umpire in a sports game. They're unnoticed unless somebody's mad at them. And that's when they yell at them. But I'm grateful for them anyway. Amen? Yesterday, uh, my, my best friend, he's a, he's a lieutenant colonel in the uh, National Guard, and uh, we were at the ball game together we, down at the Holy Lands between the hedges in Athens. And um, yeah, they usually come up, fly overs with like, you know, these jets, firefighter jets and all that. But but yesterday he got to ride in the in the in the in the flyover. They had National Guard. They only had helicopters, so they had four helicopters that came over. And Jeff was up there, and I got to wave at my best friend for over thirty years. And and but but halftime, I said all that to say this: at halftime, we talk about our country, the Georgia band. <clears throat> well, they had. They accompanied uh, someone who sang God Bless America. And Mark, they sang all the verses. God Bless America. And then they played Amazing Grace. Then they played America the Beautiful. And they recognized the veterans. And I want to tell you that they cheered louder and stronger for that than they did for any play during the ball game, Except maybe one. We have one play that, I want to be truthful, we have one play that when a 360-pound man runs the ball for a touchdown, they, they, they cheered for that. But it was so beautiful to hear them cheer and the hush and the reverence when a college band played Amazing Grace. You know, we may not be everything in our country that we should be, but there were 94,000 people that came in hushed tones yesterday, and that gave me hope. Hope. I'm grateful for our country. I'm grateful for our schools. I'm grateful for principals and teachers. By the way, when I was a kid, Christ was welcomed in school. Maybe not so much today, but I'm grateful for the ones that still put the Bible on the desk 
<laughs> Amen. I'm grateful for the ones. They may not can start the question, but when a child asks them a question, they can tell them the truth and give them the answers. I'm grateful for the things that we have. I'm, I'm grateful for trials. Anybody in here grateful for trials? I need to remind y'all. That should have been an amen moment. The writer of Hebrews says in chapter 12, and you, have to, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, and nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate, not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them. And but, but for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I'm grateful for trials. I'm grateful for trials. I'm grateful for the trials of, that come to us like Job who had done nothing wrong but it was for the glory of God. You've heard me say this before. You don't know what's in inside it till you squeeze it. You take an orange and you squeeze it. What's going to come out? Orange juice because what's on the inside comes out. You take a Christian and squeeze it and what comes out? What's on the inside? Sometimes we go through the trials like Job so that the goodness of God can be seen. Sometimes we go through the trials like Jesus who never did anything wrong, but he was hated and went through trials because of the holiness of God that was within him. By the way, the Bible says that when you go through trials like that, count it all joy. We go through trials like Job. We go through trials like Jesus. Sometimes we go through trials like Jonah. When we do things that are wrong and we're not where we should be. And God, because he loves us, chastens us. to find, Put us in the trial of the fire so that we could be changed. And by the way, Jonah did, and that's a good thing. The greatest revival in the Old Testament came from an old backslidden preacher. Amen. I'm grateful for trials. Even if it is hard on you physically, emotionally, or spiritually, give God great joy. I'm grateful for uh, my salvation, full and free. I'm grateful for a Lord that for whatever reason, just out of love, decided to leave heaven and come down and to be... To, to humble himself to become human so that he could be the perfect sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, freely give of his life, freely endure all that he endured, freely shed his blood, freely allowed his body to be broken on the cross of Calvary so that we could be pure, so that we could be whole. I am grateful for the salvation that does not end. I'm grateful that when I was a kid and had no full understanding of all the ramifications, God still gave me all of his salvation. I've been a preacher for a lot of years, and I'm still every day learning more of how good God really is. This year, this week, 35 years since God called me to preach, and I still can't get over His grace and His truth. His grace and His truth. Enter into His courts with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good. He is good all the time. All the time, God is good. His mercy 
that which is that which you deserve that you don't have to have because of his grace his mercy mercy is everlasting i need that and it's truth that plumb line of truth it never changes it's always there as the guiding light it's always there amen by the holy spirit to prompt us to receive the right path, the right way, the right things that God has for us. His truth endures to all generations. Since the spring of the year, we've been focusing on prayer. We went through a study called the Circle Maker, and about 25 or 30 of us on Wednesday nights have been going through a study called Draw the Circle. We've been praying. We put something in that circle and we drew a circle around it and, and, and we, we've been praying for it every day, many times every day. And there's some things that I've placed in that circle that God, out of His goodness, has blessed and He's let it sprout and come forth unto life. And this week, because He is God and because He can, he took a place in my life and he poured the oil of his anointing on it. And I'm free. Free. You may not have no clue what I'm talking about. That's not, that's not important. Just to know that God is there and he can. God let Job go through something for a season and a time for his glory. But God also had an ability to take and restore. I'm here to testify to you. There was something I needed that I placed in that circle that was beyond simply the revival that I've been praying for you. And I have been praying for you. I've been praying that you would have a close, intimate, personal walk with God. That God would answer. God would draw. God would move. God would make wonderful things. But God just came in and just said, Brian, I hear something. I'm just going to restore Blessings to you. Amen. And I am so very grateful. I am so thankful. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You'll never find anyone anywhere that's more blessed than I am. But God does not withdraw. God does not withhold. God does not limit. He stretches forth His goodness. The world has no hope outside of Jesus Christ. But the church, we have hope because of Jesus Christ. And we need to sing for His praise. Sometimes we just need to be reminded how good we've got it.